What's going on, everybody? It's everybody's favorite cousin, Ray Ray, just coming at you with another segment for In These Streets. Today's topic is just one good thing people like about the city of Wilmington and one bad thing people don't like about the city of Wilmington or would like to approve on. So check out the responses. The one thing I like about Wilmington is that so many youth out here that has so much talent. And the one thing I dislike about Wilmington is that they don't get enough exposure out here. So it's up to us as community leaders to come out here and put the platform out here for these kids to get the shine that they need to. Okay. I'm trying to do something different. You see me working, <laughs> trying to stay out the line. Like, but the thing I like about Wilmington is that, well, <laughs> I used to like it, you know what I'm saying? But now what I like about it is that they're making it more of an attraction. You know what I mean? Site uh, where the other people come out of town here. You know what I mean? We get more people from out of town, and that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Because we we really didn't have a lot of people coming through. You know what I mean? But what I don't like about it is that it's hard to get um, job opportunities, uh, do things for the kids. You know, uh, you know, mothers are struggling. You know what I mean? Uh, and also don't like about it because you can't. Uh, have a you gotta have a you gotta have a clean record to get a proper job to make over ten dollars. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be like that, man. But um, that's all the time I got because I gotta get back to work. So y'all be easy. One good thing, you know, obviously the city atmosphere in Delaware, you gotta love it. I'm a big fan of New York City, big fan of Philadelphia. I love kind of the hustle and bustle of the city of Wilmington. Really, a really vibrant, you know, really life filled. Okay. And one bad thing or thing that you would like to see improved or change? Um, well, my ex-wife still works in the city, so I would like to see her kind of out, but other than that, it's a really great city. Okay. Yeah. She took my kids. Okay. I appreciate it, sir. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what I like about Wilmington is I like the fact that the downtown area is nice and clean. It's always busy. Everybody's friendly, and there's always something to do in Wilmington. There's always events happening. I think it's a great city. Okay. Um, the one good thing I like about the city is it's lively. There's a lot of jobs if you're persistent. Um, friendly atmosphere, nice shopping when you don't want to have to travel to another city like Philadelphia or somewhere that has a lot of shops. Okay. Um, the one bad thing I don't like is the fact that it's not really a whole, whole lot for the kids to do. But other than that, that's the one thing that I would say Wilmington could work on. More activities for the children. Okay. One thing I'll say that's good about the city is, you know, it's small, so we all stick together. You know what I mean? But one thing that I really think is bad about the city is, it's crabs in a bucket. Everybody is trying to get out, you know what I mean? And if you're doing better than them, they're going to pull you back down. Which is why you got to separate yourself from the weak and, and, and link up with the strong people so they could guide you, so you could do things that you want to do in your life, you know what I mean? I mean, city of Wilmington is a nice city, and you'll always find somebody that's willing to help you. It might take you an hour, it might take you a day, but you'll find somebody that's willing to help you because there's a lot of generous people in Wilmington, me, myself included, because I, I give somebody my last, so. Um, hey, what about the bad thing? I mean, the bad thing is, I mean, it's like any other city, there's a bunch of stupid stuff, fights for no reason, people that are willing to get loud and unruly for no reason, but uh, the good people can outshadow the bad stuff at times, so if you stick around Wilmington long enough, you'll see that. A good thing about Wilmington is that it's small, so um, like you can walk around places really easily, but people aren't like people don't know anything everything about you. But one of the bad things is it's far from my family. So the good things about Wilmington are the uh, the local cuisine. A lot of the restaurants around here are really authentic, and they're, there's a large variety, and it's really tasty. Uh, one of the bad things, though, is that uh, kind of closed up at night and on the weekends. Can't really do a lot. Nothing's really open, so that's not the best. Good things about the city: always, always potential. A um, lot of different um, will. A lot of people have a lot of will to make it grow in the artistic realm as well as you know business, uh, students here, so there's a lot of uh, potential in the city. I would say a lot of good people and the city has not really been known for too much more than like banking because that's where we are. Um, the whole state actually incorporate your business in Delaware. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's mainly the good thing. Bad things not a lot of people are willing to like get out there and get it started because it's too much risk involved um, understandably so uh, financially um, you know as far as like you know there's lots of businesses that I know that have started up and within two or three years they're done 
because there's not a lot of support, you know. Um, so that's what I would say were the bad things. It's mainly controlled, <laughs> I don't want to get too political, by a, a certain group of people. And if you don't know those people, if you're not involved in what they want, um, then you're not going to get anywhere in this city uh, currently. Currently. But that, that would, that's what I would say is the bad thing. So there you have it, everybody. Everybody's thoughts, views, and opinions on the things they do like about Wilmington and the things they don't like or wish to improve on. So stay tuned and make sure you follow us for our next segment of In These Streets. And I'll see you in these streets. Looking to become an MMA fighter? Train with the absolute best Delaware has to offer. Check out The Coalition. The Coalition is an elite MMA team developed by the best for you to become the best. Learn to anatomically break down your opponents in the cage with the effective, elusive striking of the MBJ Athletics Training Center. At Triple Threat Combat Sports, Delaware's only Yamasaki-affiliated program, you will learn degree grappling, the no-nonsense most comprehensive form of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and a raw, pounding style of MMA striking. Team Coalition gives the best of both worlds. Two gyms, one program, Team Coalition. You'd be like, look, you are watching The Advocate. It's Keith James. We out here at Christiana Cultural Arts Center. Make sure y'all come out to the next show, June 26th. We're going to have a banging showcase. Last showcase, we had 200 people. So come out and thank you for watching The Advocate. What's going on everybody? This is your favorite cousin Ray Ray here with another segment of In These Streets. Tonight we have a special treat for you. We're at the Pivot Open Mic and we're just go going to ask all the artists what inspired them, what type of musical goals they have and aspirations that they want to attain musically. So check out some of the responses. <laughs> Like I said, 
said, I have my full set at Warm Daddy's for Love Music. We're almost sold out the tickets. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Rob C. Down. I got a song on iTunes called Ready. Um, song. Yes, it was a blue dream. Sleeping out on my week. Then we took a private jet while smoking on some sour. But the other souls took flight. If only for a night. And if I'm wrong, we get so if I'm right. Just the love of music, like, ever since I was young, I've always loved singing, so just music inspired me to sing. I started singing before I could talk. My parents say we were, um, like, on a car ride to Georgia, and they were playing Mary J. Blige. I can't remember the song, well, because I was a baby, but I was, like, singing along to it and stuff like that, so for a long time. My goals is to touch people all around the world with my voice, because I love singing, and it's so, I'm so passionate about it. I love it. Please follow me on Instagram at Liss Nails, that's L-I-S-S-N-A-I-L-Z underscore. Sold out the tickets. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Rob C. Down. I got a song on iTunes called Ready. Um, song. On. Yes, it was a blue dream. Sleeping out on my week. Then we took a private jet while smoking on some sour. But the other souls took a flight. If only for a night. And if I'm wrong, we get so If I'm right. My goals is shoot, make things happen. Like change the world with my music and stuff. So. I started singing when, when I was a young buck. I say like around 10, 11. Well, they can find me Tevin Foster at Facebook and Instagram at Tevy Tev Music. And if you want to listen to my music, it's at www.reverbnation.com slash Tevy dash Tev. So there you have it. Various artists who told you their goals, what inspired them, and their aspirations they, that they want to do musically. The Pivot Open Mic tonight was a, a great success, I might add, because, you know, I kind of created it. So I always want to make sure that we're having the most fun possible in a positive, uh, warm environment. So if you don't know about the Pivot Open Mic, it's at Christina Culture Arts Center every second and fourth Fridays. So this is it for this segment of In These Streets. And watch it because we're going to be in these streets. Talk to you later. I know the cat food isn't all that great, but I didn't know it can cause CD. Fast food is unhealthy. It's so good. Didn't know it can cause CD though. Chromatory dysregulation, a disorder that is characterized by the likeness of a feminine color by a male, is a disorder that one of seven men have and should be treated immediately. If you're a guy who sincerely likes feminine colors, like pink, purple, or yellow, Crayolax is proven to treat your CD. Ask your doctor about Crayolax. If you have asthma or any kind of allergies, 
There's a 77% chance they may worsen after taking Cryolex. If you don't take Cryolex, your CD may cause you to develop into a transvestite or a fruitcake. Side effects include blindness, dizziness, diarrhea, depression, internal bleeding, heart failure, and AIDS. If you experience any sudden shortness of breath, take one more dose of Cryolex, then crouch into the fetal position. Cryolex worked for me. It'll work for you too. Already a million men have taken this capsule. What you waiting on? Ask your doctor about Crayolex. Where can you find PNS? Everywhere. Who can have PNS? Everyone. Psychotedious necrexite syndrome. A syndrome characterized by a sudden dull and drag disposition. Sensibor can help. Sensibor is a prescription drug that treats PNS. Tell your doctor if your PNS worsens or changes in mood, behavior, or thoughts of suicide. Dizziness or death may occur upon standing. People with brown eyes should not take Sensibor. Side effects include periodic blackouts, aggressive seizures, and loss of hearing. Ask your doctor about Sensibor. Boredom sucks. Sensibor might help. Good evening, and that time has arrived when you start asking everyone if they've had their shot, and if not, why not? The first Health officials say the flu shot only helps flu about 9% of those 65 and older. This is, explains why so many older people have been hospitalized with the flu this year. The Western West the fun, fun, uh, more than a century, this country to deliver vaccines to the world's poorest illnesses would have been simple and painfully so. <laughs> At one of the busiest hospitals in Mozambique, half of the children in intensive care are in danger of being killed. Two, three. Oh my uh, first, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. You're here with the number one advocate in Wilmington right now, and you're watching the Voices for the Voiceless segment. Today we're here with Chain Zinc, and they're going to be doing a drug prevention class with Delaware's 20 Under 20. So we're going to go in here and see what's going on with today's event. So make sure you stay tuned and enjoy the show. The people who are not a part of my 20 Under 20, we welcome you, maybe next year. Um, so Delaware's 20 Under 20, were the top 20 influential young people, young professionals in the entire state of Delaware. So Keith, Nasai, Eric, and Grace are, are part of my 20 under 20. Party of people that catch charges or get locked up or arrested. Take your guess, it's the reason why we're here. <laughs> Drugs and alcohol. Majority of individuals that end up getting locked up, getting arrested, are influenced by some type of drug. You come home, you're gonna be different. Even if you her sex talk to me was, "Don't do it. If I find out you are, I'm gonna f you up." That was it. So it was more of a say as I do, not do as I say type deal. But I think in this day and age, I think it it really depends on how you were raised. And like our other friend said, the people that you surround yourself with. Okay. 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 For 20 under 20. Thank you, right? Singing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't, couldn't forget that. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind, you start with yourself and just give a brief introduction. Oh, my name is Kasai Godfrey. Love it out there, whether it's cuddling with amphetamine like heroin, um, some is cuddling more dope than others. What are your thoughts on today's event? Uh, I think today's event was pretty insightful and I got to hear from a lot of people who have had experience in this field, you know, even some people who have possibly done drugs and so I'm thinking like now that I know people who have done this it's a lot different and changes my perception on you know kind of the people who do this kind of stuff yeah. 
And if you learned one thing, what's one thing that you learned that you'd like to take back and help your peers with or implement it into any of the programs you're involved with? Um, I guess concerning drugs is that it's probably, it's all not worth it. I mean, there's, it's the consequences really. It's, you might feel good about it now, but in the future, it's, it's just going to ruin you. Well, I definitely think it was important because as teens, we think that it's pretty obvious to say no to drugs and that it'd be really easy to say no to peer pressure and not conform to what we think should be accepted or what should not be accepted. But when given the, um, when we're put in that situation to either conform or to say no and stand our ground, it's a lot harder than we think. So today was good because we got informed by really uh, inspirational speakers who told us how exactly to say no in situations like that. So they said to surround ourselves with positive people so that peer pressure isn't ever a factor in whether um, you do drugs or whether you don't do drugs and to have goals and make sure that you keep your priorities um, so that you know that there are more important things than drugs. And what's one thing that you would like to take from here so you can help other peers and other youth uh, say no to drugs? Well, definitely take all of the information that they told us, all of the advice, because that advice I can use to inform other people and then hopefully influence them to not do drugs as well. Think about today's event and what are some of the things that you learned? Um, I think today's event was incredible. Um, I learned a couple of things on drugs and effects. Me personally, I did when I was at my lowest in my life. I did actually use drugs, but other people do, other people don't know that um, that the effects of that caused me to wake up and then actually create my company, which is we need our father. So, I think um, teaching drugs and the workshop that Miss Aaron put on today was incredible. And what are some of the things that you learned that you can take back and apply it within your company, or you know, help other youth say no to drugs and stay away from drugs and peer pressure? Um, well, I like that worksheet that she gave out explaining and having us research the actual effects of um, what drug that she gave us. Uh, so I probably used that and also the meditation of it, um, thing that she used earlier. You know, I like meditation now and I'm actually going to sign up for fly yoga. So I think those are the two things I'm going to bring back. Two big things. All right, so what are some of the things that you learned from today's event and why do you believe it was beneficial? Um, I think... I learned that uh, all they're more than just the regular drugs, and I learned that um, a lot of people use them to like cope with like their decide that uh, what their like their stress and things like that. Um, and I thought it was beneficial because yeah, now um, since it is more accessible now um, with like social media and things like that, I think that that we could spread the word more. And what's one thing that you'll take away from here and pass along in your businesses or, you know, to the youth in your community, say no to drugs and stay away from peer pressure? Um, to If I ever, like, have a friend or um, even if I'm just at, in a regular conversation with a friend who I think might have that thought in their head, might just, like, throw it out there and be like, nah, that's, that's really not the thing that you want to do. Try something else, you know. You just had a successful event here at Wilmington Library. Can you just tell us, you know, what the name of the event was and why was it very important to educate the youth on today's topic? Okay, so today was a prevention works, it starts with you, workshop discussing drugs and alcohol prevention and techniques. As our students pre prepare to go to college, it's important that they understand the drugs and alcohol that they can be faced with um, also in, when you don't have parents and stuff around. Um, also in high school, because it's getting bigger in high school as well as middle school, it's important for our students to be educated on it and not have their friends educate them on it. So we wanted to come out and get everybody together so that they can discuss um, and know the true facts about drugs and alcohol. And just a final question for you. Um, based off of all of the information that was gathered by the youth today, a lot of them were saying that they were going to take it back and, uh, you know, implement that into their businesses. And so the youth that you went for with your 20 under 20, why do you think it's important to empower those leaders now to pass that information on to their peers? Well, I mean, the 20 under 20 are the top influential students in the state of Delaware so once the leaders know the correct information they can give it down to their followers um, and a lot of people look up to those individuals so it's important that they have the correct information as well to start off with those people 
And I saw you had somebody from 40 Under 40 here speaking, so you're just starting a network of, you know, leaders, and they're just empowering each other. Is that what you're going for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the 40 Under 40 is coming around again this year, so we want to do, um, We I try to get my 40 Under 40 and the 20 Under 20 involved as much as possible. So after today, um, the PSA that we're working on will be shown at University of Delaware on June 19th, so all the students who are involved will get awarded again. Um, and those who were not selected as 20 Under 20 this year, hopefully they can, you know, work up to it for next year and we can just continue to bring success to Delaware. So as you see, Chain Zinc put on a great event talking about junk prevention with their Delaware's 20 Under 20. So we want to thank you for watching this special segment of Voices for the Voiceless. And it's your number one advocate signing out. And make sure you tune in next week at 530 to watch us and see what we're doing in the community. Bernice's Educational School Aid Center, located at 2516 West 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Bernice's Educational School Aid Center is a multifaceted facility that provides child care and enrichment services to children ages six weeks all the way through college. Child care services are provided Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Our children have very wholesome experiences. In our school age program, our children enjoy going to the different activities that we provide during the summer. At our center, we focus on creating an atmosphere where infants can enjoy safety, comfort, and unconditional love. They are provided quiet rest time, proper nutrition, and stimulation by nurturing interactions. Their every need is satisfied. It all depends on how much money we can raise to be able to take care of our children. One thing that families and the parents and the community can do is to donate some money for our children because field trips are extremely expensive and we need our children to be able to go on field trips. Our little tag for Bernice's Educational School Aid Center is a place where infants and toddlers achieve academic success. Thank you.